so much to get to, so little time. So let's get out and run, shall we? Let's start in Milwaukee. Ja, he diced up the Bucks with a triple double. And for the first time in their careers, both Giannis and Dame, they have had one and four records to start the season. Bob, how much trouble are the Bucks in? Look, they fired a guy that was 30 and 13 in the league at Doc's under 500 right now. But, but look at their numbers. They're going to shoot better from three. Nobody's shooting well. Lillard's not shooting well. None of their guys are. Hmm. So that sounds like sort of optimistic. Well, they got they got upside. There's upside there. All right, from one and four to four and one, the Suns. They're second out west after Booker dropped 40 to power a 21 point comeback against the Clippers. Perk, your dark horse champs. They're looking the part early. You damn right they are, and it's led by Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. And I can see a commitment for us on the leadership wise. I love what the young fella Dunn brings to the table, along with Royce O'Neal, the physicality on the perimeter. And look, they score in bunches. They're one of the best scoring uh, teams in the league. This is why I got them as my dark horse to win it all. And then they got a few centers that's not afraid to mix it up what? in Nurkic and Plumley. Okay, we can talk about that. Let's keep moving. All right, this one's for both of you. How about that? Victor Wembanyama became just the third player in NBA history to post a 5x5 five five after his monster night against the Jazz. How long until he catches Hakeem's record of six? Bob, you not first. Not long. This year, whatever, month or two. I, I think the question with him that's interesting, though, is, yes, the numbers, but consistency, Malika. When is he going to be consistent? Yeah, consistently of living in the paint. Uh, I understand he's skilled. Greg Popovich talked about how he wants Victor to continue to shoot the ball and shoot threes, but I think he's at his best when he's in that two-man game with Chris Paul like we saw a lot of it last night. Go live in the paint. It's okay to get easy twos at 7-5. Last up here, Joel Embiid said he still won't be ready to go this weekend against the Grizzlies when he addressed reporters this morning. But that's not the only thing he talked about. He also had a message for all of those who are doubting his desire to be on the floor. Take a listen. When I, you know, see people saying he doesn't want to play, I've been way too much. I, I've done way too much, you know, for this city and, you know, putting myself at risk, um, you know, for people to be saying that. So I, I, I do think he's, he's bull uh, like that dude. He's not here. Marcus, whatever his name is. I've done way too much for, for the city uh, to be treated like this. So um, done way, way too much. But like I said, I wish I was as lucky as other ones, but that doesn't mean that uh, I'm not trying and, you know, I'm not, you know, doing whatever it takes to be out there, which I'm going to be here pretty soon. Park, what's your reaction to those comments? All three of us on the hill married, right? And when we said we do, I do at the altar, what was the number one thing the preacher said that was key in the marriage? The word communication. And that's where the ball was dropped. The word communication, because we all been speculating what the hell's been going on with Joel and B, right? What's happening with him? Why is he out? And we know when Dylan Bob, with the craziest fans, but some of the most passionate fans in Philly, they want to know. Yeah, look, they want to know, and, and fans more engaged than ever. And with people like this, more, more the star player. But I look at this, and I look, I, I take Joel at the face of what he's saying. He has played hurt. He was hurt all playoffs. He played, he couldn't walk. He has played with a broken nose. I've seen a lot of guys that won't play with those type of things. And the criticism around him and the organization, I didn't quite understand because you think the organization doesn't want him out there playing too? But you're right. Maybe it was a messaging thing. But I look at more beyond the messaging because you can fix that stuff. It's does this guy want to play? Yes. I he, of course he wants to play. He's played hurt. That's Bob, what it looks like but, to me. But, Bob, when you get drafted, when you get drafted and you sign contracts to play in the NBA – you signed to go play at the elite level, and you signed to put your body on the line. It's part of it. But that's what he's done. He I'm saying done and you got to continue to do it. That's he, why you see so many guys like Ray Allen who can't go out for a run right now because he sacrificed his body, and now it's affecting them long term. But it's part of it. This is what you signed up for. Yeah, and I, 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 I agree. But that's what he's doing is what I would say. Yes, you sign up for it as a professional athlete. You get paid a lot of money. But, think, but he's doing it. Yeah, and I think the question that a lot of fans have just had is exactly what is this? Is it an injury? Is there something else that is going on? So for more on that, let's bring in our senior insider, Shams Sharanya. Shams, can you tell us just about what is going on with Joel Embiid's ramping up process here? As of right now, it is a good sign, a good trajectory for Joel Embiid. He had his third day of five-on-five five scrimmaging today, but this was the first one in which he participated with all of his teammates in a full-on practice 
This is a sign that Joel Embiid is getting close to making a season debut. His knee is almost there. The big concern throughout training camp, though, has been the lingering effects from that February meniscus surgery that Joel Embiid had. And I'm told in, in, in the Bahamas, in his workouts that he was having, he had some minor swelling in that left knee and both sides took precautionary measures. Obviously, you have to manage anytime Joel Embiid has any type of swelling in that knee. And he knows, he spoke about it uh, today. He came back early to play last season. He, he, came, he came back for the Olympics. He participated in that. And so this has all been about him being healthy for the playoffs. And the moment they detected that swelling, that's part of his routine process this training camp and this season, uh, they addressed it. And now they feel like they moved past it. And he does feel like he's on the cusp of his debut. So we're going to have to wait to see, Shams, if Joel Embiid is back in time for our Wednesday doubleheader next week on ESPN. Shams, thank you so very much. Uh, I think Jason Tatum has that one against Steve Kerr circled. Oh, no. <laughs> as the Warriors face the Boston Celtics. And then, of course, we have the 76ers and Clippers. NBA Countdown gets it all started. Yeah, I'm going to